Why, hello, ladies and gentlemen. On today's show, we got some more Padres news. Jorge Alfaro being a trade target, hiring Francisco Garcia. Uh, why, hold on. Francisco Cervelli, maybe potentially signing Luis Garcia, reliever for the Cardinals, and then more hot stove stuff. It's a really fun time, guys. You know what it is. Locked out Padres. Here we go. You are Locked On Padres, your daily San Diego Padres podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Locked On Padres podcast, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day for Tuesday, November. Uh, 30th. As always, I am your host with sometimes occasionally, but certainly not always the most, Javier Reyes. You might be familiar with some of my baseball-related work at places like Baseball FYI, Friars on Base, Off the Bench Baseball, or Just Baseball, to which I am a staff writer for. Currently going to write a little bit of a, not a think piece, what's the word? Just a thing. Opinion, I guess, on Robbie Ray signing yesterday, because I love Robbie Ray. I've compared it to Blake Snell a lot this past year. Um... If you guys want, you can follow me on Twitter at Javapeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O, or at L-O underscore Padres, the Twitter account for the show. Um, and if you see me pointing right now to my Twitter handle, that means you're watching the YouTube. Locked on Padres on YouTube. Be sure to check that out, guys. And of course, as always, thank you for making Locked on Padres your hashtag first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode, again, a little bit coming out a little bit later, and that's just because I, all of these rumors that are swirling and everything that I keep hearing, it's just I have to like I kind of like wait a little bit because I don't know what's gonna happen. It's not like the signings are happening late at night. There seems to be a trend of them happening early in the morning. We got Javi Baez just now, which you know I guess we could talk about in a little bit later on the episode. But we're gonna be talking about a bunch of the big hot stove developments that have happened across baseball. And maybe if they affect the Padres in any way. Talking about the remaining free agents because we're probably going to get a lot of them signed based on what Jeff Passan said, uh, tweeting out that basically with by Thursday, it you know it doesn't seem like preliminary talks are going well between the bargaining committee. We're probably going to get a work stoppage. So that probably suggests, based on how everything's been going, that we're going to get even more free agent signings. So that's going to be exciting for baseball fans in the present time. But in terms of the future, we're probably not getting any news for a long time. So uh, enjoy it while it lasts, guys. And then we're also going to be talking about a bunch of Padres news that got announced both with personnel and players and rumors for players so that's really fun so let's start with the Padres side of things guys um the first thing I want to talk about a lot there's actually a lot what just happened as I was getting ready to record is that um according to Robert Murray free agent reliever Luis Garcia is in serious talks on a deal with the San Diego Padres according to sources familiar with the situation Garcia 34 posted a three point Two four ERA and thirty four appearances with St. Louis last season. You know what I think of when I immediately hear this? Just quick take. It's an older reliever, undervalued reliever. Sounds good. Remember what we did with Mark Melanson? That ended up working out pretty well. So if there are any people who are worried about bullpen stuff, I don't think the Padres are in a situation where they need to allocate so much to the bullpen. This isn't the Phillies. This isn't the White Sox. Maybe not the Blue Jays teams like that, where you really are like, yeah, they should just pay top dollar to try and get Rizal Iglesias or somebody like that. I don't think the Padres have to do that. So my thing is, you know, I like that they did that trade Adam Frazier. I really did. I like the reaver they got there. Yes, he is a little bit lower on prospect boards because he is 27. I recommend everyone going back out. Um, Aram Layton um, hosted a, he hosts the Lockdown MLB Prospects podcast. He did a breakdown of the trade, kind of talked about, um, the reliever and the player that the Padres got in return, just kind of breaking them down as maybe some potential utility guys. And the Padres said, all right, let's get a reliever that can help us potentially now. And I think that that helps because without Drew Pomeranz and with a little bit of questions with some other guys, are we sure that Craig Stammen uh, might have some sort of regression? Uh, not that he was outstanding or anything, but he could have a little bit of a regression. And then you have guys like Emilio Pagan who have been a disaster. And most importantly, Drew Pomerantz, who's hurt right now. So bolstering a little bit of your bullpen depth is definitely certainly something I would do, but it's not something I would spend top dollar for since oftentimes, as I've mentioned, relievers are one of the most volatile positions in all of the game. So I'm not trying to invest all that much. They're like the running backs of, of, of baseball. You know what I mean? That's what it feels like, at least anyway. Um, one second, they're the best of the game. And then the next second, they like, do you guys remember what happened to like Kirby Yates? All of a sudden, I know in fairness, he got hurt. 
Uh, but still, for the most part, these guys just fall off for whatever reason. So uh, nice little signing. If it does go through, I'll if it happens while I'm recording the show, then I will say so. Um, and then the next thing that happened that is official is that the Padres hired Francisco Cervelli to replace Rod Barajas as the team's catching instructor. Sources tell The Athletic, I'm reading a Dennis Lynn tweet, uh, Cervelli, 35, retired from playing last year after 13 major league seasons, including two in Pittsburgh with Joe Musgrove. That's right, Mr. Cotton Eye Joe, the San Diego native himself. Uh, really cool stuff. I actually have a friend of mine who actually, um, uh, for NBC, CBS, San Diego, go um jake ariani who was telling me that he just talked to joe musgrove and he's like the nicest guy ever musgrove really was just like i, I know we've been giving parlor a little bit of crap uh and, and rightfully so by the way like in terms of just you know you, you've swung and missed on some trades but the joe musgrove trade really can't be like forgotten how good that's been for the team not only has he just been seemingly a great clubhouse presence not only has he just said all the right things and be really great in the community i love seeing him at like the like some of those like taco stands or whatever. I forgot what place it is. There's a place in San Diego. I don't live in San Diego, breaking news for everybody. But there's a place there that has some special Joe Busgrove like item on their menu. And then he's taking pictures of his fan there. I love stuff like that. It's really fun. And of course, throwing the first no-hitter in franchise history. It's really great. It feels like he's just a Padre. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they extend him. So by the way, guys, if you want to extend Joe Musgrove, keep in mind that that may also be uh, something that's being taken into account with why the team might not spend too much more on free agency. But back to Cervelli. Uh, I love Francisco Cervelli. I remember when he was on the Yankees. It's not like he's the best player ever, but not the worst defender. Uh, and now, not, not that they're signing him as a player, but he was always fun. He was always a great baseball dude. You know what I'm saying? He always had this energy about him, which I wasn't really used to uh, from catchers, let alone the Yankees. I mean, the Yankees team, Lord, Lord knows, they never have fun personalities. The last time they had fun personalities was like Swisher back in, Nick Swisher back in 2009. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that was definitely a welcome kind of thing. And he was a decent backup catcher. I like him. It seems like he was around a lot of teams and a lot of people said really good things about him when he was with Pittsburgh. So as a catching instructor, sounds kind of cool. Maybe this can help when um, Luis Campisano ends up debuting. Maybe he can help in, in some departments with guys like Victor Caratini and maybe even Austin Nola. I don't know. I, don't, I think those guys are more veterans and don't necessarily need too many pointers necessarily. I think that they're decent at the catching position. But maybe something like Luis Campisano this could help in, at least hopefully in the time being. Uh, so I really like that. That's fun. And reuniting with Musgrove is always, always very cool. And then the last thing that happened in terms of Padres news is source. Uh, this is reading now from John Morosi saying, of course, Padres are interested in Marlins catcher Jorge Alfaro, who signed with Texas during A.J. Preller's time there. Alfaro is a non-tender candidate after Collins' acquisition, as Craig Mish reported. Um, for those who don't know, ja uh, Jacob Stallings, we we're going to talk about this next time, but Jacob Stallings was just traded to the Miami Marlins. Elite, 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 phenomenal defensive catcher. I did see some rumors that apparently uh, in this collective bargain agreement, they're going to be talking about robot ups in some way. That's not a vibe of something that I think is going to happen immediately, so whatever about that. But no nonetheless, pitch framing didn't allow a single pass ball last year. I thought that was a pretty good uh, pickup for the Marlins, especially because... Um, the Marlins have an incredible young pitching staff, so he might make them look even better. It's going to be like really like a, a match made in heaven in a lot of ways, so that's exciting for the Marlins. But uh, Jorge Alfaro, my instant reaction to this is I don't get it really. Now, I'm not saying that Jorge – look, Jorge Alfaro has had moments before, all right? You look at some of his time. In 29 games with the Phillies back in 2017 – he had a decent slash slide, 318, 365-14. The year after that, 262, 324, 407. And then in his first season with Miami. Uh, hold on, am I reading this right? In his first season with Miami. Yeah, in his first season with Miami, 262, 312, 425, just for slash line stuff. Basically just average catcher stuff in the past couple of years uh, with Miami. In 2020, 26, 280, 344 slugging, and then 244, 283, 342. So not the worst like numbers for a catcher that I've ever seen, but he's certainly not very good. Everyone that I talk to seems to act like this guy's the worst. I know he has positional flexibility, but that's just weird because he didn't play it well. He had some really bad defensive blunders in left field last year. He had some really bad moments at first base. I think that's more of an indictment on the Marlins not putting out a respectable product on the field. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really think that... Uh, that we should be all that excited about the positional versatility of Jorge Alfaro. But 
you know, before we get into the bigger reason, aside from the fact that Jorge Alfaro, I don't think is just very good at all. Maybe you could argue the Padres, maybe change of scenery, maybe he can become something. But before we get into why exactly I think that this move is incredibly puzzling, we first have to talk, guys, about betonline.com. AG. It has all your favorite sports covered with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. That's right, than ever before. Awesome stuff. As football season continues to march to the playoffs, they've got you covered there. Head to their new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code locked on to receive that bonus. Whether it's football, whether it's basketball, whether it's the NHL, whether it's favorite Vegas casino games and baseball, of course, they are the best place to go to. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet. Ladies and gentlemen, bet online where the game starts. And then just one more thing I want to talk about. Look, I've been watching a lot of TV lately. I have to admit, this is my biggest TV watching year of my life. And I used to be anti-TV, by the way. Save that for another podcast. But um, today, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all the entertainment, not just TV, but all the entertainment you love without the hassle and that you can be done. It can be done, ladies and gentlemen. I know it sounds crazy, but it can be done thanks to direct TV stream all your live and on-demand favorites like never before, which means you can watch everything, not just TV, but sports, movies, more sports. I don't know. Whatever you want. You can, you can watch it all in one place. And the best part is that there's no annual contract. That's a big, big deal, guys. Let me tell you. So stop waiting and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. Remember, DirecTV Stream, guys. Go check it out at directtv.com. Again, guys, thank you for making Lockdown Padres your hashtag first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Let's continue talking just a little bit more about Mr. Jorge Alfaro. So, look, I don't really view this as a, a thing. I'm not viewing it only in the sense that I don't think that he's a very good player. It just doesn't seem like he is. He seems like he's bad defensively, and just because he could play left field doesn't mean he could play it well. Yeah, we could send Eric Hosmer to left field if we wanted to. He could probably play. These are professional athletes, and they are professional ball players. but does that mean that they can play play that position? And that doesn't seem to be the case with Alfaro. And more puzzlingly, the Padres already have Austin Nola and Victor Caratini as their two catchers. Unless there's some type of work move in the works that's going to send away uh, Victor Caratini or Austin Nola and they want to have two catchers and they just want to not pay Austin Nola, whatever. If there's some kind of chicanery going on beside the scenes that involve, hey, who knows, you Darvish getting traded? That ain't happened. But if you Darvish got traded and that would be a package deal sending Caratini since that's his personal catcher. Otherwise, I don't really understand it because on top of that, you have Luis Campizano, who's one of the best... Um, catching prospects in baseball right now. I know what you might be thinking. His debut with the Padres this, the, earlier this year, or in the 2021 season, I should say, uh, was less than exciting. He was not very good. But I think that that was just poor development stuff. I understand that Austin Nola got hurt and you were kind of in need of a catcher, but I just felt like that was totally unnecessary and you should have just gone another direction. I don't care if it's Webster, Revis, or whoever. I just thought that that was really unfortunate because they were putting him in high leverage situations too. Pinch hitting in games against the Dodgers early on. Back when the rivalry was actually like a thing and heating up and it was fun, uh, that was like a thing that happened and he predictably kind of floundered a bit. Then he got sent back to the minors and started becoming fairly quickly, which was good. Um, it didn't, doesn't seem like they stymied his development uh, back to the hitting prospect that we all hope he can be. So for all those reasons, I don't really see why this move is a thing. Maybe there's some Francisco Cervelli connection. I don't know. Maybe. I put the tweet out there last night. Maybe this is just one piece of the puzzle in which that will make it that the Padres are going to dump our first baseman. The guy at first base who plays for the Padres. Maybe there's some type of way. I'm going to push that out to the universe. That for some reason, getting rid of Alfaro means that uh, we could get rid of our guy at first base. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying I'm manifesting it. Um, but guys, let's now talk about some of the other big free agency moves that happens. Fun, guys. I don't know about you, but I'm just having a blast. I really am. I really am. I know that the Padres haven't done too much, but I think that part of that you guys need to understand. And by you guys, I don't mean that condescendingly, by the way. I'm just saying uh, it as a 
a pro down, whatever. Like it's it the Padres are spending a lot of money right now. 190 million. And when you trade for Snell, Darvish, Musgrove, you don't have as many assets to trade for, say, a Matt Olson or what have you. You don't have that bulk package. You aren't able to maneuver as much. And that's why I think the Adam Frazier trade was good. Just get a soft little reload on a guy that you don't really need in Adam Frazier. But the Padres are not going to be able to go out here and spend all that much money. I know what people keep saying. They're like, there's no such thing as an overpay. There's no real hard salary cap. These guys are billionaires. It's not your money. Be happy about it. I know. But let's look at the reality of the situation. Obviously, we're, I'm not talking about overpay for players like when I talked about the Rangers yesterday. When I said that, I thought it went a bit of an overpay for Simeon and Seager. I was just saying in the sense that $500 million, uh committed to two players around that much money is a lot and i'm not saying that it's a lot in terms of the literal you know mm, sorry that literal financial realities of it i'm saying in terms of we all know how owners are going to be they're only going to go so far like that does that make any sense so there's there's a little bit of a, a dichotomy there. there's a gray area that makes sense i'm not saying in the literal terms of like wow that's a lot of money for two players that that's bad i'm saying it's just how baseball works are is Texas ownership going to be down to spend even more? No, it means that you're probably short. You know, you're constraining yourself a little bit. It's it's an imaginary cap, dare I say, in, in some situations. But anyway, that's a little bit of a get off my soapbox for a second. In terms of the big moves that happened yesterday. Yesterday, the Max Scherzer trade literally basically became official right after I finished recording my episode yesterday. Three years, $130 million. I gave my thoughts on that. I think you you have to spend that much for Max Scherzer. It's a big game move for the Mets. I like the Mets th- uh, moves that they've made. I really wanted Mark Hanna. I thought that they could potentially, that could be the big Padres splash, dare I say. Maybe to replace Tommy Pham. Uh, could have been a decent player. They got him, got Max Scherzer, got Starling Marte, got Eduardo Escobar. They are spending big game. And I like those contracts too because they're not too long is what I think is very good. Because you already have some long contracts with Mr. Francisco Little or Puerto Rican Power who's going to bounce back next year. Don't you worry. Um, but I like that for the Mets. I will say, I will say this is baseball. And what I mean by that is it's not impossible that Max Scherzer falls off. I know the baseball fans get mad every time I say this, but if I told you that DJ LeMay, Grant, different position, different situation, uh, Max Scherzer is going to be a Hall of Famer. If, I, if someone told you DJ LeMay is going to have an OPS of 710 this year, would you believe him after being an MVP candidate the prior years before? Would you believe, oh, he's going to line a little bit? Yeah, you would believe that. But oftentimes with baseball guys, guys go from being really good to just absolutely useless. There's no in between with the fall off sometimes. So that's all I'm saying. Um, but either way, really exciting move at the minimum for the Mets. And then the other big deals that happened. Robbie Ray, five years, $115 million deal. Never thought that this was a Padres trade or free agency kind of target either with the amount of money that they already have. Um, I like the move for the Mariners. It is possible. I'm going to be writing about him a little bit. It is possible that he declines. But what I do like is that they spent some money. This team was very close to the playoffs. And more importantly, they've got a lot of prospects coming up. So this team just getting some extra veteran help, getting some proven talent on top of what you may have coming up and what is largely considered by many to be the best farm system in baseball. I like that move in general for the Mariners. Whether or not Robbie Ray works is another thing to be decided by other people, but just in terms of getting out there and getting a proven sort of big league guy who just won the Cy Young, very exciting for Mariners fans. But even more exciting, everybody go look at list of the Lockdown Rager. That that episode is blowing up by my buddy. Bryce Paterik of Locked Out Ragers. He's killed it over there. It's got like a thousand views. Go check him out. He's freaking out. Not only did they sign Marcus Simeon to that seven-year 170 deal or whatever, they signed Corey Seager. That's right, the shortstop of the Dodgers, former now shortstop of the Dodgers, 10 years, $325 million. Absolutely insane. Is it a big signing? Yes. Is it an impact signing? Absolutely. You know what else I'll say, though? Uh, Seager has missed a lot of games. He's missed 239 games since the beginning of 2018. So there is a little bit of risk there. Like I said, a lot of money for just two players, but nonetheless, it was very, very exciting to see it. Go check out that episode on Lockdown Rangers. Bryce is killing it. He's doing some good work over there. It's exciting. It's exciting, but I'm very curious. I mean, if there was one positive that happened yesterday, guys... Dodgers players are no longer going back to the Dodgers. There haven't been a lot of big splashes by teams in our division this year, which I'm not saying that that means that they're going to be worse guaranteed, but at least it means we, you know, I said this last year with when they signed Trevor Bauer, who's a piece of crap, of course. Um, but hey, bottom line is one of the things I wanted was him for him not to go to the Dodgers. That way I knew they wouldn't have this pitcher. 
so far, the Dodgers and Giants, they basically staying the same so far. So hopefully it stays that way because it's already going to be an uphill battle for the team. And then, of course, I already mentioned uh, um, Jacob Stallings got acquired by the Marlins. Another move that happened, Kirby Yates. I alluded to that earlier. Two-year, $8.5 million contract with the Braves. And then Daniel Hudson, our guy, who had a lot of... Man, when he blew that Colorado game. You remember that Colorado game early on in the year when Trent Grisham, with like two outs, tied the game with a two-run or three-run home run? And then Daniel Hudson came in and gave up a leadoff home run to CJ Crone? God damn. I mean... This game, this year sucked, guys. <laughs> like, this was such a bad season, and I, I almost I almost forget it sometimes. Uh, Daniel Hudson agreed to a one-year deal with the Dodgers for $7 million. Hopefully, he doesn't get miraculously so much better. And then the last deal that just happened this morning, which is why I alluded to, uh, why I've been waiting on getting my episodes out just a little bit, because the deals seem to not be happening late at night, but early in the morning and afternoon. Six years, $140 million deal to Javi Baez. That's right, the guy who shares my first name. My first thought is he's definitely one of those free agents that has a downside. But what I don't like is everyone's acting like Javi Baez is the only one that could get really bad. As if we've never seen, like I alluded to with LeMahieu, that players can just decline rapidly, uh, pretty frequently. And not to mention, it's like, why is it anyone talking about some of these other players? I just, I just don't get it. It's like Carlos Correa's have health issues. Seager's had a lot of health issues, just like what I mentioned before. He's been like 100 gajillion games. You know what I mean? So let's not act like Javi Baez is the only one with risk. That being said, I think this says a lot about what Carlos Correa's market might be like. It either is one of two things. That Carlos Correa's market is about to be insane. And this guy's going to get like 390 or something absurd like that more than 10 years, more than Corey Seager. Or it means that he just really didn't want to play for the Detroit Tigers. That's the vibe that I'm getting, which is a little bit weird because AJ Hinch is over there. They obviously, you know, he was the manager of the Astros when they won the World Series. But I don't know. We're going to see what happens. By the time I finish recording this episode, we could get, I keep seeing my phone getting a lot of messages. Hold on one second. Okay, no. The reason why I want to be uh, checking my messages during this podcast, guys, is because my group chats will blow up if uh, Carlos Correa sides. So we have to see if that happens. Um, I'm actually getting a report now, though, from Ken Rosenthal. Padres are in serious discussions with free agent reliever Robert Suarez. Sources tell The Athletic Suarez. Uh, 31 on March 1st, is Venezuelan and has only pitched in Japan. Last two seasons with Hanshin, 67 saves, 1.65 ERA, and 114 and two-thirds innings pitched. Expected to command one year um, salary in around one year, seven million around that range. Interesting stuff, but before we get into uh, more of the free agency stuff, guys, and before we conclude this episode, one little bit of a break. I forgot. I forgot. Whoops. <laughs> I forgot that I, uh, it's just two ad locators. You know what I mean? So everybody, welcome back. You're listening back to the podcast. Um, keep it going. Um, this news that the Padres are looking after this guy is basically just, okay, they're kind of going for the strategy that they did last year, which is spend a little bit on a few relievers for like short one-year deals. I like that. It worked for us last year, and it should work again this year as long as they choose the right one. So I don't mind this that much. And it probably means that they're not re-signing Mark Melanson. That's probably what that means. And I get it, because Mark Melanson, after the great season he had, which is his prerogative, and he should absolutely do this, after the great season he had, he's probably going to command a little bit heftier of a price that the Padres don't want to give up right now. So that makes sense. Another report that I'm getting, by the way, which is hilarious, NL West team, not the Dodgers, not the Giants, not even the Diamondbacks. The Rockies are interested in Chris Bryant as they are obviously aiming to compete in 2022. Geographically would certainly work for Bryant, a Las Vegas native. That tweet from John Heyman. First of all, obviously compete? What are you talking about? Obviously compete? What? What? No, you know what a team is that obviously is trying to compete? The Padres, the Rangers, the Mariners. Where? Why are you saying, John Haven, what are you talking about? I, I kind of love John Haven because I think his Twitter can just be chaotic and ridiculous a lot of times. Not on the S tier of awesome as Bob Nightingale, because I love Bob Nightingale so much. That guy will never apologize for anything. He just tweets through it. I love Bob Nightingale so much. But um, in terms of these reliever moves, could be interesting for sure uh, in terms the Padres beefing up their uh, bullpen, it does mean that they are a little bit concerned about guys like Luke Pagan, Drew Pomerantz, maybe even Austin Adams who can't seem to go one inning without hitting a batter, but I like it. I'm a big fan of just kind of spreading your resources thin with bullpen. I, I really am. I don't like signing that one major guy, especially when it's not like our bullpen was. Even in the second half, it wasn't great, but it wasn't the worst in the league, so that's what I would say about that. 
The last thing I want to mention is, you know, I understand the Pods fans are, are still a little bit disappointed that there hasn't been many uh, big signings. But again, I'm just saying there's not a lot of money necessary to spend right now unless they're able to get rid of either Will Myers or the guy at first base, the guy who plays first base for us. If they're able to get rid of those guys, a lot. A lot of possibilities open up, but going to get rid of those guys, it was going to happen earlier, at least just in my opinion, because you've seen how quickly all the top talent has gone. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like if they got rid of those guys, then they would have been in on a lot of players, not necessarily like the Trevor Stories, or not the Trevor Stories, the Corey Seegers of the world, but I still think that that means, you know, they, they'd be a little bit more in on guys. I've heard some rumors about Nick Castellanos, who I've talked about, is a guy that I don't necessarily love. A seven-year deal is what he might be looking for. I know he's a good player. I know he's a good offensive player. I, I just really want confirmation that we're getting the DH because I don't want another minus defender, even if he is a great bat for the Padres lineup. They need some home run power. I get that. But I'm just saying I wouldn't hate it, but I, I wouldn't. Let's let's be a little careful, guys. Let's be a little careful. But speaking of um, free agent bats that are still available, let me just remind you guys quickly who some of the other top free agents are in terms of hitters. Carlos Correa. Then you've got Freddie Freeman, who, by the way, is reportedly... I was saying how it was good news that the the Dodgers lost Max Scherzer and, and Corey Seager. Apparently, the Dodgers are heavily pursuing Freddie Freeman, which scares me. This comes after the news that Max Muncy has a torn UCL. So it actually does make a whole lot of sense why they might be aiming to get after another first baseman. But even still, Max Muncy's very good. Do you want to give all that much money for Freddie Freeman? I don't know exactly. It is the Dodgers. Their pockets are deep, but... That does line up with the fact that Max Muncy has a torn UCL, which stinks for him because Max Muncy, very quietly, an incredible year for him, um, even though he is a Dodger. Um, also, free agents that are available, Chris Bryant, who I just mentioned, obviously, and the fact that the Rockies are, I don't know what that organization is doing. Go listen to Paul Holden of Locked on Rockies to find out. Um, Trevor Story, Nick Cassianos, who I mentioned, Taylor, um, um, Kaiser Suzuki. What is this guy's name? I, I forgot his name. I'm blanking on the guy's name right now. I forgot his name, but the star from the, the new uh, baseball player star, he's killing it. Uh, let me see if I could look up Suzuki Baseball. Just see if I could find it. This is embarrassing. Suzuki Baseball. Let me see. Ichiro, no. Saya Suzuki. My apologies, guys. Um, Japanese professional baseball player. Apparently, there's some really good stuff on him. I've heard comparisons to Hideki Matsui. I love if the Padres went out and signed another uh, star from that league. It would be really fun, uh, honestly. I, I know that Hasek Kim hasn't worked out that much, but it would be fun. But I imagine that he's probably going to command a little bit more of a price. Anthony Rizzo, Jorge Soler, Kyle Seeger, not Corey Seeger, obviously. Michael Conforto, who's a guy I really like because I think you could get him on a one-year prove-it deal. Eddie Rosario, Jonathan Villar, Nelson Cruz, who if they signed him, if the Padres signed Nelson Cruz, that's the biggest obvious evidence that, yeah, we're getting the DH next year, but I don't know if that'll happen. And then Jan Gomes, just kidding, Jan Gomes actually just signed a two-year deal with the Cubs. And then starting pitchers, Marcus Stroman, Carlos Ryan, Clayton Kershaw, um, Zach Greinke, and Danny Duffy. Um... I mean, those aren't too bad. I think that with everything that's happened, I would be very shocked if Clayton Kershaw didn't return to the Dodgers. But nonetheless, I've seen crazier things. So we'll see how that plans out. Marcus Sherman obviously being the last big one left. I heard some little rumblings about the Cardinals, which makes sense. That's a team that wants to have a little bit more solid of a rotation. It's possible that they might have just had some lucky sort of guys and things that just bounced their way from guys like J.A. Happ and um, what's his name? Uh, um... John Lester this past season when they went on their uh, winning streak. So maybe they want to go out there and be like, all right, we'll have a healthy Flaherty. Maybe Adam Wainwright we have next year. Even though he is a little bit old, he was awesome this year. And then finally, you bring in Marcus Stroman. That's a nice three-headed monster right there, especially with maybe if they can develop a little bit more of their pitchers and they have some other guys, um, some reinforcements on the way. I would like that. Very interesting personalities, by the way. Wainwright, Stroman, and Flaherty. I'm a fan of Jack Flaherty. I like him as a guy. Like Adam Wainwright. Marcus Stroman, I'm kind of... I don't know. Let's just say uh, I, I like him as a pitcher. I like some of things about him, but I'm no longer getting all that annoyed by people who don't like him. He's done a lot of things. He says a lot of things that I don't really like, and there's something about his personality that doesn't fit well. But who knows? Who knows? Um, so we're going to have to see how that turns out. Carlos Rodon going to be an interesting signing as well. I'm curious, guys. There's still a lot of stuff left, man. 
make no mistake, this is a nuts, nuts time to be a baseball fan. And I know that the Padres not, aren't necessarily doing anything just yet, but don't let that fool you. There is still plenty of talent on the market, and I'm excited for it. I think that there could be uh, you know, some minor additions to this team that put them in a more of a contending spot, especially when you consider... Um, that they have some decent prospects coming up in their system, especially when you consider that they might have got a little bit unlucky, that players performed a little bit too bad, that I think that there's going to be some regression to the positive headed their way. So exciting times, good vibes, and as always, um, you got to you gotta keep the faith, man. You, you really do. This has been a nuts free agent, but oftentimes, I think what ends up happening, by the way, too, is teams, whoever is the last team to sign a free agent, is which fan base is happy. People are forgetting, like, the Angels fans are losing their minds right now. They signed Noah Syndergaard on a prove-it deal for, like, $25 million for a year. That guy might be a top 15 pitcher. So that's not that bad, you know what I'm saying? But then you immediately forget because you see all these other guys going out. (coughs) 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 Nearly died on the microphone. Happens. Um, But because you see all these other guys going over, the Yankees fans are freaking out because they need a shortstop. Even though you still have Carlos Correa and Trevor Story available, they are losing their minds right now. Why is the cash doing it? Give it a little bit of time, guys. There's still probably like two days left until we get to Thursday and things really kind of come to a halt. But, hey. Uh, I am enjoying the freak out from Yankees fans, certainly. Uh, but guys, that about does it, basically. Remember, thank you for making Locked on Potters your hashtag first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked on Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms. In terms of the future of this podcast, guys, I have a bunch of people that depending on what signings happen, what signings might look likely, you know what I'm saying? So like if this Jorge Alfaro trade does go through, um, I will be bringing on Aram Layton of Lockdown MLB Prospects. He is a Marlins guy. Breaking that down a little bit with him, that should be a lot of fun. If any sort of guy signs, if Nick Castellano signs, Jeff Carr, you know what I'm saying? Every Lockdown host, we're in. We're doing stuff. And I've been talking to some other people uh, that might be, depending on how things transpire over the coming days and the fact that we're going to have like no baseball news for a while, so people are going to be a little bit free. Some kind of other media people that you might be familiar with. Kevin Acey of the San Diego Tribune I've been talking to might have him on the podcast. It's been a while since he's been on, and I think that would be a lot of fun. So lots of fun, ladies and gentlemen, lots of fun. And, of course, free to see updates. This podcast is killing it. I don't know about you guys. Well, I feel good at least. And I'm wondering, leave me a YouTube comment with what other, what other non-baseball stuff you're doing lately. I've been telling everybody, watch Arcane. It is such a good show, the League of Legends show. Like, I'm not just saying that as like, oh, it's good for a video game show. No, it's like actually incredible. I was like, oh, why is this so good? But anyway, guys, with that all being said, that about does it for today's edition of the Lockdown Padres podcast, the only pod that may be better than the Padres themselves. Remember to subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts from. Follow me on Twitter at Javapeno, J-A-V. I-I-P-E-N-O, or at L-O underscore Padres for the Twitter account for the show. Lockdown Padres on YouTube. Wearing my CP3 shirt. Uh, not because I'm a Clippers fan or anything like that, but I love Chris Paul. Hope they beat the uh, the Warriors today. That would be awesome. And until next time, stay safe and, of course, stay faithful. My Friar Faithful homies, take care.